Hello, everybody. This is Dan Armstrong. I'm a solutions consultant here at Adobe, and I am excited to take you through Photoshop today and share with you some of my favorite tips and tricks, as well as teaching strategies for helping people learn Photoshop. So whether you're new or you've done this a lot or in between, I have something for you today, and I just appreciate your time. With that, let's get started. Uh, so when I work with Photoshop, the first thing I want to think about with students is I want a high level of success from the very beginning. That means we need some engaging content. Uh, so I've got a blank screen here in Photoshop and, you know, the, the kids, they just want to go get their thing and bring it in, right? And so when you open that image, uh, you get like locked layers or sometimes it's a GIF, you get all these weird things uh, that cause you some problems. And so... I wanted to show you how I open photos in Photoshop uh, from the web. So I always start with students out here uh, in Google because they're going to do it anyway. And so I'm going to help guide that process a bit. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show them about is the tools button here. And I'm giving them a topic to search up, just a black and white logo um, of something that they appreciate. And it shouldn't be overly detailed uh, because we're going to use the black and white to our advantage later and we want a high probability of success. So I'm gonna go with a black and white logo. You pick what it is, doesn't matter. I choose the Batman logo just because there's some curves. It's pretty easy to see the pieces. Uh, it's just a good image to work with uh, for beginners. So this one I've picked out. Um, what I've done is inside my tools here, I've just gone over here and picked large. Uh, that way, at least the image we bring in is not gonna be like a thumbnail and it's not gonna be all pixelated and it's gonna look pretty good. And they're gonna, again, high probability of success and we're setting them up to win. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy that image. Uh, I would do like a command C on my computer, okay? And so I start to teach them the hockey right at the beginning. Command C, copy that. We're gonna go over to Photoshop and I'm gonna do a command N for a new document. And you'll see here, this is pretty cool it's picked up what's on my clipboard. So it sees those 2,400 pixels and 72 PPI. And it says, hey, is that the size of artboard you wanna create? Cause I'm guessing you're bringing an image in. I wanna say, you bet it is. And so I'm gonna come over here and tell them, name it, uh, you know, Batman. And then I will just hit create. And then all I've gotta do is press a command V and that pastes my image right in here on the canvas. You'll see over here, it's on its own layer, separate from the background. So we don't have to deal with the locking mechanism and all those kinds of things. And we're ready to play. Okay, uh, so those are some basic steps for getting the image open. And then from here, I'm gonna say, you know, for me, this is the default layout. Uh, so I have everything is kind of piled over here. I have tools over here. I always tell them, keep the mileage down on the mouse. Right? I don't want to go back and forth all day. So over the years, um, I have developed this one called My Happy Place. And I've developed this layout in Photoshop. Uh, many people I've seen and used different things, and I've reorganized. So this is My Happy Place in Photoshop. And I tell a little story about how I developed My Happy Face and let them then create their own layout and kind of base it off of some other things. So now, I'm just going from here to here. And you'll notice like my buttons are right here. So when I wanna add an adjustment, right here's my properties panel and my options will pop up right where my mouse is. So everything's in good shape. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do in Photoshop is I'm gonna do some basic stuff. So I'm gonna say, hey, look, here's a rectangular marquee tool. If you drag it out, it makes a selection. If you hold shift, it'll add to the selection. And if you hold option, then it will subtract from the selection, okay? And so I'm just gonna walk them through a couple of those things. Just let them get familiar and say, hey, you know, a selection is not very temporary. It's kind of hard to lose, you know, talk about some of those things. Uh, and then I'll go through like, you know, some of these other tools here, like a lasso tools, L, right? And say, hey, you know, if you just hold shift here, uh, we can actually add the lasso to this other selection that you've already done, right? So all selections can kind of get put together and then we'll play with hotkeys. So I'll say, if you hit hold shift, and press L again, it will switch to the next tool, uh, which is like the polygon tool. So if you look at these, and this is L over here, shift will let you cycle between those, okay? So there's my polygon tool, hold shift, press L. There's my magnetic lasso, back to my lasso, back to my polygon. And I say, you know, if I just start over and I don't hold shift, uh, then the polygon works, okay? And so I kind of get them like some ideas, just playing with selections. 
And then we're gonna get into now, okay, so how would we select then part of our image? Uh, well, we use these top ones based on a shape, a uh, circle or square, that's not real applicable. These ones are done more free form when we're dealing with the lasso. Uh, we could maybe use a magnetic lasso, but what we have here is black and white. And so we can really use either the magic wand, which selects things based on color, or the quick selection tool, which detects edges. So, you know, for me, I'm just saying, you know, for me, I'm just gonna grab the magic wand. I know that not everybody loves it. They call it the tragic wand, whatever else. Um, I'm gonna set my tolerance up here. So tolerance says, how many colors do I select? Okay, so I'm gonna click on black, and then how many shades of black am I gonna pick up in addition? So 10 is usually pretty good for something like this. I'll just go pretty wide and say 30. Um, that's pretty well gonna pick up everything in there. OK, so I might show them, you know, since we're selecting based on color, we would use like this magic wand. But if we wanted to do like a quick selection, if like we had, you know, a, a pencil in our hand or something and we just wanted to drag it across, we could do that. OK, and don't forget to tell them about this contiguous button up here. You'll notice that it didn't select the outer ring. It only selected what's in the middle here. OK. So with that selection, and now they kind of understand how those work, I'm gonna introduce the idea of a mask. So I'm gonna click and add this mask and say, hey, look, you know, the only thing you're seeing is that bat part uh, that existed. The ring is gone, but it's still here. Okay, and I might even just play and say, hey, okay, guys, for a second, just like get your brush tool out. Okay, and then what we're gonna do with the brush tool is if I brush on this, see, it's like erasing here in my mask right there. You can see like the dimple in there. OK, but it's actually still here. It's just I parted it black and white. And so they start, oh, OK, I kind of get it. Well, then it's like, OK, so let's make a second layer here. Um, and on this layer, I'm just going to hold command and click on the layer, loads the selection. And uh, I'm just going to come up here to my select menu and I'm going to say, let's go to uh, select inverse. OK, so now I've selected the back and uh, I'll just get rid of this layer mask. And now I can apply it that way. So now I have a mask that has this black bat symbol, and I have a mask that has the outer ring. And so I could go through and continue to build these layers, teach them how like this masking works, okay? And maybe, you know, you make some duplicates, do some things, but what we start to get into then is, well, now we can say, let's deal with some adjustment layers, you know? So we'll drop like a solid color on this. Um, and maybe, you know, let's make it green, for example. And uh, I should have probably selected that image first. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I can just move my mask up and replace it with the option key. Uh, so now I have this green fill layer that fills in the middle of my bat, okay? Um, and so then I could do some things with this, you know, we could come in here and uh, right click this and go to our blending options. And we could do, you know, something like a bevel and an emboss. And, you know, I just play with these things so that they can kind of go, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I love it, it looks great. And then all they do for the next whatever is just play with the bevel and emboss wherever on their logo, okay? And so those are a few of the things that I teach them and the order I do it, from the get-go. So we're gonna deal with selections. Why do we make a selection? So we can make a great layer mask. Why do we make a layer mask? Because we're gonna add effects to it that we only want applied in that section. And that's a great way to help them get a foundation of what's going on um, inside of Photoshop. We just take them through selections. We make selections to make masks. The masks helps us with adjustments and blending options and voila. And so we play and they're like, okay, that's great. But then they want like, well, show me something like meaningful. Why would I actually use this? And so then I have a great solution for them. Uh, so I'm gonna share with you an image that I did. Uh, the case that's going on here is I had a friend come to me and uh, <laughs> really funny actually, he had house envy. Uh, his neighbor's house paint job looked better than his. And he's like, okay, look, dude, here's my neighbor's house. 
And my house doesn't look as good as his house. And I like some of the things that they did with the paint job on the outside of the house. Uh, so, for example, you know, it's sort of bland and just all gray. And he said, is there a way you could create something that I could, like, manipulate the color and try on colors for my house to see what it might look like before, you know, I paint it? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That sounds good. Um, and so what we can do here is I went through and using those same skills I just showed you, uh, I used some polygon tools. Uh, I used multiple selections here and there. Uh, don't look too close at the bushes. I sort of just did a rough cut. Um, but you can see the areas that sort of go together, right? So here's the like shingle siding, for example. And so what we can do is if I just turn this one on, so this is the neighbor's house. And, uh, you know, it's not a perfect representation because shadows and all those kinds of things, but it's close. Uh, so all I've got to do is click on my color here. And uh, let's just say, you know, I want it to be maybe this color brown a little bit. And we'll say OK. And then I can just turn off the upper one. And now he can kind of see what that color would look like, uh, you know, on the house. Uh, the same thing here with the yellow, the upper siding. Uh, so if I come in and let's say maybe we're going to make the upper siding a little bit lighter, uh, I can sample that color and then we'll say OK and uh, turn this off. And then this can like transform what the upper siding looks like. And so using mass selections, we've created a document where we can actually do something useful. Uh, you know, if you think about this in terms of like, you know, enterprise, like if you're you know, at a Home Depot or something, if you could just come in and like click the color and sample it from another picture, like I think that's pretty meaningful. Uh, and so giving them a real world example, a real problem to solve with tools they already used. Uh, I mean, you have them bring in an image of a house and create something like this. Uh, by the time they get done, they're selection tool masters, they're masking masters, and they know everything they need to know about adjustment layers, blending styles, right? Right here, they're all set to overlay because that brings in the shadows and all the pieces from the back instead of like if it was just normal, right? So if I just did normal, it's just gonna look really lame, right? But as soon as I change the blending option to an overlay, then it looks really good. So all these things start to come into play in a real world project, okay? So that's how I get somebody started in Photoshop. By the time they're done with this, like they're feeling pretty comfortable. Uh, and then it's time to do what we actually love to do in Photoshop, and that's take care of an image. So in this next section here, we're going to jump in. Um, I'm going to go open up uh, an image here. And uh, this one's actually kind of a fun image uh, that I took. I think we're going to go with Hollywood or Hogwarts. Uh, whew. Let's go with Hogwarts today. Okay. So this picture was taken on my DSLR camera. It's like a big file. Uh, you could do um, anything here. It doesn't really matter how you want to lay this out. But here's my image. And uh, you can see, like, it's OK. The sky's maybe a little washed out. There's some shadows down here that could come. Uh, so the first things I'm going to teach these kids is right here about the histogram, OK? So you can see I've got like a lot of color over here on the right and my bell curve is slightly shifted to the dark side. So the idea here between a histogram is you just want this bell curve to be nice and smooth. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of this area and I'm just gonna kind of pull it to the left and I'm gonna grab some of this area. I'm gonna pull it to the right and I'm just gonna kind of nudge some of this around to try to like maybe balance it out a little more. Okay, and you can see already, just moving the histogram, doing nothing else in camera raw here, I have fixed a lot of this photo. Like, it looks really significantly better. Uh, I think we can just, uh, you know, look at the default and then turn on the way that I've got it. So, pretty good right here. I'm liking this. Um, and, you know, I might turn the temperature was like maybe just a little bit off when I took the picture. OK, and so then we can talk about, you know, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, blacks, whites, all that stuff. But really, if you just hover up here, look, it highlights this. This is blacks, right? Those are my shadows. Those are my exposure over here. Highlights, whites. So 
I could just say, well, I mean, your exposure is a little bit off. Just kind of pull a little more over into the middle, right? Okay. Well, then now then that bumps up your whites. So your whites need to sort of squish back in here a little bit, okay? Especially that blue. It really needs to come back in. And so we can balance the photo just using the histogram. So that's the first section right here. All these sliders between the two black lines, just do it with the histogram, okay? And it's good for them to learn like what that is. Okay, texture, clarity, dehaze. Clarity is designed to hit the mid-tone of the image that's difficult to get to. Uh, the things, you know, we're just gonna pump this up just a little bit. Um, sorry, I got that backwards. <laughs> The clarity is gonna give us the edge to our pixels and kind of crisp it up just a little. The vibrance down here is the part that hits the middle tones of the images, I apologize. Uh, and I usually will touch just a little bit of dehaze. It just clears a little bit of that smoky, kind of foggy look out of the picture. Okay, and saturation is gonna do the entire image. So be very careful with your saturation. Like, I really want this sky to come in, um, but I'm struggling there because the rest of the image looks good. So I'm just gonna come into my color mixer and in my saturation, I'm gonna use this uh, adjustment right here. So this is a target adjustment tool. The way that works is if I click on it and it's saying, hey, I see this color. So if I click and I drag just that color, then it will only bring in the blue. It isn't saturating all the colors, it's only saturating the sky. So now, like my image is looking much better because I got my blue sky, my shadows are looking good, the edges are nice and clean. And the only thing else that I'm gonna do to this image, and especially when I'm working with like new students that haven't done this, I'm just gonna come grab an effect and I'm gonna dump this vignette just a little, just to bring in those corners. And I'm loving this, except that I want my temperature to come back up just a little. Oh, wow. Now that is a picture of Hogwarts that I'm like, I could get behind that. That's cool. Okay. So the histogram is what you teach them. Show them how to balance it. Explain to them what like clarity, dehaze, vibrant saturation, so they don't end up oversaturating things. And then a little bit of the color mixer. These are really fun too. If you desaturate the whole image and then you can bring one color back in uh, to make some really cool black and whites with like one color and stuff. That's some pretty cool things you can do with that. Um, so that's camera raw. You could do that with any kind of photo you wanna bring in here. I didn't even touch on all of the tools we have. We could do a lot of the photo editing right here in camera raw, but you can get them started with some basics really quick. And if you look at the image, like our pixels actually look pretty great and the adjustments did a pretty good job on all of this. So. Super exciting, camera raw, inside of Photoshop, okay? Uh, so I'll just hit done for now. And I will even point out that you can use camera raw right here as a filter. Uh, so if you just have an image, it's a JPEG, well, you can just drop camera raw on here. And this is gonna say rasterize smart object. Anytime it says smart, click on it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. And so that's the layer I had selected. That's why it's bringing it up that way. But if I just, um, let me do this, I'll bring that one up and add the filter now as a camera raw filter. So if I wanted to try to like fix some of these shadows and stuff, now I can just do that. And I can just say, you know, here again, here's my histogram. So I'm just gonna pull my exposure up a bit. Look at how much better it already looks. Uh, and I'll pull in some of my whites. Okay, so now I wanna target shadows. And I just want to see what they look like. So I'm going to pull those way out. Um, you know, highlights are good. Okay, great. So then I hit OK. Well, what it does now is it fixes my colors in my house. And it's just a layer. So I could just turn on and off the camera raw adjustments. Okay. So camera raw, use it, love it. It's awesome. Uh, and the other thing you're getting here is when you click back in to go edit this. Uh, whoops, wrong one. When you click back into your camera raw filter, these are all the sliders they're gonna use later in Lightroom or in color grading inside of Premiere. So all of these things have impact across the board, okay? So for a beginning student inside of Photoshop, if you've done this, camera raw, and our little Batman logo we did here with layers, selections, masking, adjustments, bevel, oh my gosh, there's so much, and they're only in your class like six weeks at this point, right? 
So pretty exciting, some great ways to help them get started. Uh, and I wanted to just share that and go through that with you. So um, I'm gonna jump over to a little pre-recorded video here uh, for Photoshop on the iPad. Uh, and then we're gonna pick this right back up here inside of Photoshop. We'll get started by looking at the home screen for Photoshop. We'll click on the Create New at the left. And this document, we're gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'll call it Local since that's the brand I'm working with today. And when we create this new document, we'll choose a white background. This is Photoshop running on the iPad. On the left, we have tools such as Transform, Lasso tools for selections. There's also brushes with different stroke styles, and we have an eraser tool just beneath that. The paint bucket also has a gradient tool underneath, and our healing brush makes an appearance, including the option to sample all layers. Further down, we have the text tool, and we also have the options to import images below that. On the right side, we have options to add new layers, including adjustments and groups. And below that, we have the settings for those layers including deleting layers, renaming them, and locking them. This is a brief overview of the interface for Photoshop on the iPad. We'll go back to the home screen where we can see that we have cloud documents ready to be edited. In this photo, we're going to take a look at cropping an image. I can hold down the option circle on the right to constrain the crop to the correct proportions. I can just move the corners while holding down the option circle and that allows me to adjust my crop and get it just the way I want. There's also rotation options near the bottom. When I'm finished, I can click done in the top right corner and there's our photo and we're ready to go for the next photograph. This photograph's a picture of a wedding cake that my wife made. It was my job to take the pictures, but now I have some trouble in the background with these ports on the wall. And I want to use Photoshop on my iPad to get rid of these. So I'll grab my healing brush and I'm going to select the option to sample all the layers. And I'm going to create a new layer to go on top. This way the edits I make won't affect my original picture. I can simply brush over these with my healing brush and we'll use content aware to fill in the back. We can adjust the size of the brush and continue to paint over the tops of these and you can see on the layers over on the right that it's adding these edits to a new layer, but it's sampling the data from the layer below, just like we would experience inside of Photoshop. And now our cake is ready to go. In this image, we just want to add the logo and some contrast to make it look a little bit more visually interesting. So I'm going to get started by clicking over here on the left to choose my library that has my logo in it. When I click on the logo, it's noting that it's going to insert it as a flat image. Once the logo is inserted, I can transform and move the logo on the screen to the position that I want it to be in. With the logo done, I can now go in and we're going to add a little bit of interest to this. So I'm going to go to the select subject option and it's going to find this subject for me without having to click on anything. And we're just going to go now and I'm going to invert the selection and I'm going to add an adjustment layer such as a black and white so that we can make the background black and white while we leave our subject in color. You'll notice here now that it's created a mask and on this part of her hair, we have a little bit of brown from the background. I can simply grab my brush and using my option circle, I can erase out that part of the mask and refine it. I can continue around to get the edge of all of her hair and we zoom out and we look at the edges and the final image. We've got a great photo that's ready to go in a few seconds in Photoshop. Because I edited the photo on the iPad in Photoshop, it's now here in my cloud docs on my desktop version of Photoshop. From here, I now have access to all the tools of Photoshop. For example, my image adjustment layer is here along with a mask and my local logo is available to me as a separate layer as well. It's all because of the power of cloud docs found inside of Photoshop. In this tutorial for Photoshop on the iPad, we saw how we can access our favorite tools on the go and we can do precise editing on mobile without sacrificing quality. 
the more immersive and natural experience of a touch device and the seamless workflow with Cloud Docs. I hope you enjoy editing with Photoshop on the iPad. I hope you liked what happened there on the iPad. Um, I just want to bring up that image that we just looked at in the iPad. And so I'm going to go to my cloud documents and inside my cloud documents, uh, I'm going to find right here, here's my image that I made on the iPad. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And uh, you can see over here, like I showed you in the video, there's my logo. Uh, I have this black and white object. And I just want to show you one more thing inside of Photoshop that I couldn't leave out. Uh, I'm going to go to the window menu and I'm going to choose layer comps. Uh, I'm sure some of you have worked with layer comps. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, some of you may not have. And uh, so I just want to run you through a couple ideas. So let's say, for example, uh, I want to make a new layer comp, okay? And what this does is this is showing, like, apply this to the visibility of layers. Uh, it could do it by appearance and other things, but visibility works pretty good for me. So I'm going to say black and white uh, background, okay? And I'm just going to say, okay. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off that black and white adjustment, and then I'm going to add a new one, and I'm going to say full color background. Okay, background, there we go. And I'm going to add one more uh, that's full color, or just this would be like the original photo, all right? Uh, wow. Photo. Wow, I can't do it today. Okay. And so what this does now is, so here's my layer comps. And so I've been turning these eyeballs on and off. This is a very simple image, only three layers, but you can imagine if you had like, you know, 50, 60 layers in here, what this could do. So all I've got to do now is in my layer comp, if I just click on the black and white one, then it changes the visibility of my layers to bring back my black and white image. And if I want back to the original photo or the one that has the full color background with a logo, I can use those layer comps to set this up. So in that way, you could mock up three or four different styles that you like with layers, save them as layer comps, and then you can ship those out uh, just down here at the bottom. You have the option to update and send these and share them. So layer comps are fantastic. Uh, just a fun little piece to throw in there for you and a way that you can work with your document that you may have started over on your iPad, and now you want to finish that up right here inside of Photoshop. So again, my name is Dan Armstrong. I'm Adobe Solutions Consultant, and I really appreciate you being on, and uh, all the best as you teach kids and get the world ready to be able to use these creative tools. Thank you so much.